Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So recording's going. Cool. And people should be coming in. There's a the participant Ooh. count going up. Thank you, everyone, for uh, bearing cool. with us. We had some technical difficulties, but we're up and running. So we'll just let the attendees filter in real quick here. Slowly growing. Yeah. All right, but I will go ahead and uh, turn it over to you all, and I will disappear into the technical support void. So I'll just be monitoring stuff here, and it'll be all just sharp. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. Hello, everybody. We are so, so excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Magdiela Ermida Duhamel. I am an associate producer uh, in animation. I am also the founder um, of Latinx in Animation, which is a nonprofit organization that works to promote diversity, inclusion in animation, VFX, and gaming for Latinos, Latin, Latinx. Um, in here in the US, uh, we're super, super excited to partner up with Brick. Uh, foundation, which is an organization that we've loved and have worked with um, for the last, you know, couple five years now uh, that we've been working with them. We love them. And we're excited today to uh, have an amazing, amazing, amazing artist that I personally have worked with. And I have the honor to have uh, share a little bit of some background history, but I would love to um, introduce you to Miguel Gonzalez, who is an art director on Nickelodeon's The Casa Grandes, where he uses his keen eye for marrying whimsical details with the timeless beauty of Mexican culture. Some of his best known roles include working on feature film, The Book of Life, Cartoon Network's Uncle Grandpa, and Nickelodeon's Glitch Text, and The Loud House, of course. And of course, Warner Brothers' Unkitty, animated series so there's a lot i know he's amazing he's wonderful um he's also a wonderful human being an angelino um and i will send it away to um to me uh to miguel just know that we are going to have some space with miguel at the end for some q a so please save your questions and think of them up um, during the panel, you can go ahead and type him in into the q and I'm going to be moderating that. And at the end, we will have some time to answer your questions. So that's enough for me. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will send it away to Miguel Gonzalez. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me, Miguel. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Miguel Gonzalez. I'm from a small town called Porterville. Um, I knew at a young age I wanted to make cartoons. Um, so I did my research and I, I always saw this college that always came up and it was CalArts. So I did my research and that was one of my goals. I wanted to go to CalArts. So um, I tried, but I didn't get in. So um, that was kind of one of my um, rallies where I was like, wow, I can't believe I, I got rejected. I'm going to go back and see why I got rejected. So um, I started going to the school and, and started meeting some of the teachers and, and some of the students and asking them questions about how can I get into CalArts? And they kind of helped me out. And then I got my portfolio ready. And then the following year I, I got in. So ever since that, I, I kind of, my career has blossomed. And now I'm here at Nickelodeon working on a movie that hasn't, well, has it been announced? It has been announced, the Casa Grande movie. So that's going to come out, I think, in March. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, yeah. I was going to show my portfolio as well. You guys want to take a look? I'm going to share my screen. I think a lot of questions, people are like, what is visual development or what, what do I need for my portfolio? So I'm going to just show that and just talk a little bit about it. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And let me know if this works. All right, here we go. Here's my portfolio. First page, it says my name. And then what am I looking at? It's a visual development portfolio. So right off the bat, you see a character. So that kind of just introduces me. And then here's some work that I did on Book of Life. 
um, everything that you see on screen, someone needs to draw it or come up with it, design it. So one of my jobs was to just draw what we thought will be around these grays. So on the bottom, you could see candles and pots and skulls and things that you see on the, on the graves. Um, here's a building that you see in the movie where Magnolo tells, uh, or when the bad guy is trying to get the, the ever living or ever life medal from Magnolio. He's trying to uh, give it to him. Uh, here's a bunch of graves from the movie. Um, I pitched all these little thumbnails and then the director would pick the ones that he liked. So then the ones on the bottom are the ones that got that you see in the movie. Um, I got to paint one of them. So that's the one on the left. Uh, everything you see in the movie, you have to, someone has to draw it or it gets assigned to an artist. So there was like frames, picture frames on the wall. So I had to figure out the picture frames. These are all the ones that got rejected from the movie and they wanted to go with something a little bit more simpler um, a little less, um, yeah, too much detail and too much uh, attention to itself. So these are the ones that you see in the movie. Um, then I had to figure out the whole, the rest of the inside of this interior, um, flowers, the plant life, like what do they look like in there? So we usually have to do like a, like a close up of these things. Like these are hard to tell in there. Can you guys see my cursor? Yes, we can see it. Cool. So those things are, are the flowers over here. So these were some options. So those flowers will go up in there. Um, the horse that you see, Magnolia, um riding in, in the Land of the Dead. This is the horse that was in the movie. I got to develop that horse. Um, buildings, all the buildings you see in the movie. There's like these floats that you see in the movie. So this is the one that you, you see in the movie there. These are a bunch of options. Uh, more buildings, piñatas, buses, cars. There was like this scene in the morning where all these cars are, are zipping by and buses, but they all got cut in the movie and they just made it like super early in the morning where just buses were there. So that's the bus that you, um, you see in the movie. Um, this is just my own little project that hopefully one day gets made. It's like a story about the Red Riding Hood, but my take on it. Uh, these are like or bad guys, or this guy's bad guys. Uh, people that they, they, they work for him. Uh, just plates and bottles that you see. Here's uh, some buildings that I thought might work for the film. Plant life, every film has plants and bushes and trees. So we got to figure all that out too. As a visual development artist, you have to go in and figure out what these plants are going to look like in this world or in this movie or in the show. So I, I really love drawing plants. Uh, character prompts. So as a visual development artist, you have to be able to um, draw a little bit of everything. So if this is something you you want to get into, I always suggest being able to draw props and characters and backgrounds and cars and just pretty much anything you see in the movie. I feel like the more versatile you are, the more you'll be able to find more work. I love drawing cars, so uh, anytime there's like a vehicle or tank, I'm all for it. Um, one of my strengths is always giving like um, options, sometimes a little too overwhelming. I throw out too many options at the time, so sometimes I have to just put my favorite three. There's some color. You see a lot of these where you have to draw um, the room. What does it look like in the morning? What does it look like during the day? What does it look like in neutral lighting? Uh, what does it look like at night? Uh, sometimes you just pitch a different options of what this bedroom can look like. So here's just a few options of, you know, maybe the bedroom looks like a, you know, fire, firefighter truck, or maybe it's a bunk bed, or maybe it's just a single bed. 
Um, here's another background I just threw in there. That was from Pigo Bank Cricket. Um, some more cars. I love drawing cars and I love working in small. And then once I, I figure out the cool shape or silhouette, then I'll blow it up and, and, and kind of really figure out a little bit more of what this thing looks like. Um, plants, trees. This one looks like a skull kind of thing that I want to play with for my own little project. So that's a cool, interesting idea. Some more characters. I love drawing cars. Just different options of what this car could be. Like what what are these what does this car look like that these people drive? So this is my idea of, you know, maybe they drive this kind of like monster truck car thing. Um, these are guns. Uh, Vikings. Um some visual development I did for for a movie. I love um, learning different styles. Um, this is just kind of like from Golden Book artist style. Uh, this is uh, a film that I'd made when I was in college. So this is uh, the main character that was in that film. Here's uh, just a bunch of options of color. What what colors? What what color is this guy? So sometimes you have to just pitch a bunch of ideas or color options to a director. So these are all the ones I pitched to myself because I was a director on my short film. Uh, this is the other character that was in my film. Um, these are all a bunch of little options of what this you know, robot arm could look like. Uh, some more example of character work. And I included some of the backgrounds that I did. These are some from Pickle Planet Cricket. And these are from Uncle Grandpa. Um, this is from Rocco's Modern Life, the movie. I worked on that film. And then my information, my name, and then my Gmail or my email. That's it. I know that was a lot. But I could um, answer any questions or my daily, what, what do you have in mind? Yeah, no, I, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know there's people who already had questions that they're thinking of. Um, I love to kind of hear uh, a little bit, if you don't mind, um, you talked about being from LA, um, but I love to kind of just hear a little bit of how you, uh, once you've submitted your resume, right? Once you do your portfolio, um, kind of what is sort of a little bit of the next steps as if you do start to get that response back and maybe it's not, Hey, come work on a show, right? That's not usually the email. Um, I love to just talk a little bit more about what kind of happens after, if you want to just kind of expand on that. Like once you, um, submit your portfolio, kind of, mm -hmm. um, after that, usually you kind of like set up a meeting with, you know, either the recruitment or someone, uh, on that project and then you kind of just um, have like an interview and then sometimes you just meet some of the other people that are involved of that uh, project but usually it's just an email kind of like a meet and greet kind of thing mm -hmm. sometimes it's freelance hey we really like your work um, we're working on this project are you available to help us with x amount of hours of freelance you know, to see if you're a good fit for that project. Okay. And then um, kind of to wrap up the portfolio part is if you don't get a response or you don't hear from someone, um, what what do you do? You just kind of move on and not reply. Do you follow up? Um, and then to follow that, if you hear from them and it's a no or it's a, hey, we're not, you're not in our style, like what what is also the sort of the follow up on those? I usually love to get feedback if I don't get something that I really wanted to work on. So earlier on in my um, career, I got this really good feedback of like having lunch with people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would set up a lunch meeting with these people and just kind of pick their brains of like, why was I not a good fit for it? Or 
you know, everyone has to eat. So I think that's a good option to meet people and just pick their brains. So that's what I would do. I would just go and set up a meeting or a lunch, a lunch meeting or a dinner meeting. If they weren't available for lunch, I would do dinner. That way I could get that feedback and apply it to my portfolio. Um, but sometimes um, follow up goes a bit long ways too, because sometimes when I'm building a team, I get so busy doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I used to get a follow up, you know, like, hey, Miguel, I know I sent my you know portfolio away. Did you get a chance to see it? Mm -hmm. And that's just a refresher. Oh, yeah, I have to look at portfolios. Okay. So that's, that's always that's good. good. Yeah, that's a good advice, actually, the follow up. And I get it when you're busy. Sometimes just getting that reminder email could be great. Um, and then one last thought before we move on, we have a couple of questions that are that are coming in is, you know, we talked a little bit about the portfolio itself, but um, I wonder from your from your experience, like what was that physical first step that you were like, I have to put this portfolio together. Literally, like physically, what is that for everyone that feels like I don't even know where to start? What, what was that for you? I think at Cal Arts, they got us, I feel like they did a good job prepping us for the industry where we have classes and every day you had something to do. So we would just put the work into a portfolio of our assignments throughout the year. So by the time you're your fourth year in college, you had, you would say you had a portfolio, you know? So I say, if you're going to college, and by the fourth year, if you only have three finished pieces that you're happy with, then you need to get to work and, and add more pieces to your portfolio because three pieces is not gonna tell me much. And and it just questions me if, if you really want it, because the people that really want it, they're gonna have you know 10 solid pages filled with really good work. So. That's a good one. Help. so yeah sometimes I, I i see portfolios that have three beautiful pieces and i'm like cool that tells me you did one a year like we yeah. don't have time to do one a year pieces no. <laughs> yeah you have to do like you know a couple of backgrounds you know a day so it's like speed goes a long ways as well mm -hmm. um I feel like a lot of people can do the work, but can you do it at this time by Friday? You know, like that's a whole nother skill. Like you just need to be good at time management and be able to work at a steady pace to hit that deadline. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, Miguel. We're going to go into some questions that um that are, are on the Q&A. Uh, let's start. We have a question from Lizette Diaz. Uh, the portfolio was amazing to look at. I'm wondering, I want to be specifically a character design artist. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest is a ratio I should follow with pro props slash environments to characters in a portfolio? That's a good question. Um, or I would say um, if it's for character specific, you know, your first couple of pages should just be characters. But I like to see other things in people's portfolios. Some people don't, but I like to see what else people could bring to the table because sometimes I don't have a character position open. I have a prop designer position open. You know, do they do props? Cool. Oh, they don't. Oh, I don't know. Next portfolio, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really have much time to be like, uh, I don't know if they can do this work. So sometimes maybe, sometimes if I really like their character work and I need to fill a prop designer job, I'll look them up on their Instagram and see, hey, are they, do they do props as well? Yes or no. The only reason I got hired on Book of Life was because I had props in my portfolio and they needed someone to do specific the props. Mm -hmm. Once I got in, I got to do other things, but they were specifically looking for someone that could do props. Okay, so a little bit of everything is good. And, and you know, from the producer perspective too, let's say a lot of times, same, we're always keeping a little tally of the things that people can do. So, um, but it's good to be open about 
um, you know, uh, my strength is character design, um, but I can do everything, right? I think that's also, um, at least on my end, I always love that honesty from artists. Yeah. All right. Thanks, said I hope, uh, oh yeah, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Great. Um, we have another question for, um, from Mariana A. Um, and it's kind of like a two, more of a two questions, but let's start with one. Do you have any tips or where to have your, or where, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have any tips on where to have your portfolio and how to organize it? So where do I have it? Where do I store this if I have all of my images ready? I would say um, anywhere that has, I mean, some people just buy the, like a website name with their name, like miguelgonzalez.com. You could buy that website and just put your portfolio there. Some people put it on Instagram. Um, Tumblr was popular at, at some point. Blogspot was popular at one point. But as long as it's somewhere on the internet where you could send the link, I think is valid. Um, yeah, Instagram is a great place to start too because sometimes I'll be looking for artists and I'll I'll fall into someone that's doing amazing effects in the style that we're working in and I'll just reach out and let them know like hey you know I'm looking for an FX artist are you available so I think just putting yourself out there eyeballs the more eyeballs on your work the better um and then another question from Mariana is how is your cultural research process um, to create props and environments for projects like the Casa Grandes or Book of Life? I usually go to that place and take okay. videos and take a sketchbook. And mm -hmm. um, if I know people are going to that location, I'll let them know to take photos for me or videos. So for the movie Casa Grandes, um, I went to Mexico and mm -hmm. took a sketchbook and took a bunch of photos and videos and and just document everything that I could I could think of, you know. Yeah. So we went to museums. We went to just anywhere I could find, you know, stuff that I knew I needed for the film. Mm -hmm. And how does that process? Um, because I'm curious, you know, kind of following up on that question is when you come back and now you have all your sketches and all your stuff. Like, how does your brain start to kind of put that in order? Like, how does how does an artist or what advice you have for for people who are like, yeah, I've, I have ideas. I have a book full of ideas, but how do you now put it into, you know, the style that you, the Casa Grandes created or even Book of Life are very, very specific? That's a good question too. Sometimes I'll look for things that already look like our style, um, but sometimes I'll just caricature whatever that is into our style so mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just sketch it and then I'll bring it back into our style you know I know that sounds easy but it's really <laughs> no it's no it sounds sounds really hard but easy I, I totally knew what you mean um cool so we have another question um from um apologies if I'm saying your name wrong uh Payavi or Payavi or Palavi um do you use any 3d when creating these pieces and if so should we show the 3d setup how we use the tool in the portfolio uh, i don't need to see it i think it's great if you want to show one example of 3d and how you got to your finished piece but it's not necessary but i don't mind seeing one like if you set up a camera and you did it in Maya and then and then you did the rest that's okay but I wouldn't want to see you know 10 pages of the process okay all right yeah. let's move. oh go ahead go ahead sorry I didn't mean to interrupt yeah but some people use 3d they'll they'll just kind of block it out block out like a bedroom of okay this is where the bed's going to be and the light or whatever bookshelf and then they'll just go back to photoshop and just really figure out the shapes or put it on style or you know, design design it cool okay so keep it minimum you don't have to 
Got it. Okay. We have another question from uh, Frida Valtierrez. I'm a graphic designer student, but I realized that I want to be part of entertainment world. I'm a bit lost where to start. How can I make a portfolio? What's the essence needed? Oh, that's a good question too. I was in graphic design. Like I thought that's the, the route that I was going to go in, but I always love story, like animation story. I think that's why I love our industry is because I get to do a story, story design and color. I would just say take an animation course or class and and see if you really are interested. You know, I think take a class or two, a course, and, and really decide, okay, this is really what I, I love doing or eh, it's really not for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would also say, you know, these, this, you being here, it's a great way to start. Brick, uh, Latinx animation, uh, woman animation, rise up animation, being part of this industry, it'll kind of give you some ideas of the things you don't want. And then that would help you kind of meet people on the things that you do want. So um, we also have some anonymous questions, you know, just kind of um, um, from different people that um, would like to keep their name. So let's see, for portfolio, should I create character props based on existing shows or my own creations? I feel like if you're first started, I would love to see your take on things, like your own creation stuff. Um, but once you start in the industry and you have stuff from the shows, then that's okay. But me, I, I'd rather see the vision of the artists or where they're at um, and see what their take is on, on design language and color theory and all that other stuff um, because I feel like a lot of our work is coming up with things that we haven't seen and that's the hard part like it's I mean not that it's easy to draw Bart Simpson but he's already designed they already mm -hmm. figured it out we could yeah. draw him he's he's done you know what I mean but can you think of a character that we haven't seen in the Simpsons world for example like that's a whole nother skill you know, different side of the brain, you know. So I would love to see what you bring to the table, not what's been done. Yeah, that's a good one. And um, yeah, it's always exciting to see the new characters. Another anonymous question is that um, you mentioned you started your own film. I'm trying to pitch an idea to a company and have made a pitch Bible, but I'm lost as how to approach them. Do you have any advice? What is the typical procedure that I need to follow? Also, if bought, how much say as a creator would still have if they were to sell it successfully? It's a big question. A lot of good questions, a lot of big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like once you have a, if you already have like a pitch Bible, that's great. If you don't have that, it's a good place to start. Um, but I feel like some people just pitch like an elevator pitch where they just, pitch an idea and then they like the idea and, and they keep moving forward. They'll give you a little bit of money and you could, and you could develop it a little bit more. But um, having a pitch Bible is great. If you're already there, that's that's even better. Um, but I think once you sell a project, I think it all depends on your contract, like how much, you know, how much experience you have or how much um, creative freedom they're gonna give you. But that that can all be negotiated. I feel like if you if you do sell a project, you definitely need to find like um someone to represent you. Yeah, and I would say that that is really it's it's not as easy, obviously, and it is, takes a long time. So, uh, for all anyone else who is working on their Bibles, be patient. I would say that that's one thing I always tell creators is be patient because um getting your bible all the way to getting your show on air it could take so many years um and a lot of times it's just staying in touch and staying in contact and continuing to follow up so um good questions good questions we have one question from joshua sell i'm not having a job and even though i'm sketching a lot it's not working as well as i hope i still have no job in six months and animation is slow for me any tips uh yeah send over your portfolio i would love to see where you're at um 
All right. Okay. But I, I would say, um, I would say, look at people's portfolios and see and be honest with yourself at the level where you're at and what other people in the industry have in their portfolio. Um, yeah, because I knew I, I needed to get better at my craft. At, at some point, I felt like I really just need to buckle down and, and make my portfolio to where it needed to be. So I just buckled down and locked myself in a room and got it to where I needed to be. I just started replacing the stuff that I got notes on or people were like, eh, it's not your stronger, stronger pieces. I think maybe having a few people in the industry take a look at your portfolio and try to help you out and you know, take this out, put something in, replace that. You know, just get someone you know, in the industry to have a look at it. Okay. Thank you, Joshua. And, you know, uh, Josh dropped his Vmail down below on the chat if you want to grab it or, um, you know, Joshua, just you can always just stay in touch with with Brick ourselves and we can make sure there's that connection of the of you getting um, portfolio over and your feedback. So thanks. Thanks for doing that. Miguel and and I honestly that's a, a huge huge advice that um I would love for you to really listen to is share your portfolio to people share it like don't be afraid even if it sucks you're for you you're like it sucks I don't like it I hate it fine that's fine still even even better share it and say I hate this why help me make it better and I think that's really important because you need to know what your other peers and your are, are doing. Uh, what are the trends that are kind of there? If you want to be part of, if you're going to go against it, I think being informed is really a big part of the job when you're trying to find jobs, Joshua. So I think like focus on that. And one thing too, that Miguel said was like, just shut that curtain, close that door, close the windows, whatever it is you need to do, play the music, no music, silence, dark, whatever it is you need to do to like, can I curse, get your shit together? You know, that's kind of what you got to do. Um, and at some point you'll feel it, you know, you start like, okay. And, 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 and sadly, maybe you realize, oh my God, I don't want to draw 30 hours a week, 40, 60, 80 hours a week. My hands are, I don't want to do this, but I like this or I like that. That is, um, another way for you to really kind of like buckle up because then you realize what is it you really want because if you really want it then um I don't know Miguel I don't want to speak for you but I'm sure once you buckle up those drawings were coming right like once you feel it and you're passionate you're doing it but if you feel like it's not happening it's also good to listen to that and see because this industry is big and there's other stuff people love drawing props I've met artists who are not interested and who are like, I don't want to draw anything. I love doing computers and I love doing phones and with cups. And like, so it is about finding what you like to do as well. And that would always could even be your niche. And you're like, oh, we want to hire this person because they're the best at props. Um, I also have a shout out. There is a brick portfolio review that are open for the 2024 summit. Uh, applications close on February 23rd. So please look at the link that we'll just share on the uh, on the seminar chat so y'all can start looking at those um applications yeah that's a good point i was i was thinking about that uh portfolio sometimes i'll i'll look at portfolios and i'll notice their strength is color like their their designs are okay but their strength is color sometimes it just needs someone yeah to be like no like play your strength and get your foot in the door. And then if you really want to do character, just slowly move over to that area. But sometimes I, I see portfolios, I'm like, dude, you're a story person. Like your drawings are funny. You have really good ideas, you know, and storyboarding, they're just like quick, sketchy drawings. They don't have to be pretty and perfect. Like the idea is what's important. Not, I mean, drafting is good to have, but the idea is it's, it's the, the goal and story. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point. Um, let's see, we have a couple more questions. Um, yeah, and thank you for sending your questions. We still have a, a little more time to go, so please take advantage 
of of um Miguel's time, his frankness, and his willingness and openness to answer these questions. Um, we have a question from um Pallavi Payavi. I'm so sorry. Uh, you mentioned speed is important when drawing. As a junior artist, how fast are you expected to deliver? Also, what does the art director lead look for a junior artist? Um, for speed, uh, it, it all depends on the style and the complexity of the style. So they usually budget it depending on how how hard it is to accomplish, you know. So it all just depends on the style of the show. You know, some shows you have to draw, you know, two backgrounds a day. You know, some shows you need to draw a little bit more than that because the style is a little bit easier. So it all just depends, but um, I say if you can't do one background a day, you're gonna have trouble meeting your deadlines. Um, same for character work. You have to do X amount of you know, character work per week. So it ranges. Sometimes it's five things a day to get done. Sometimes it's more, but I would say at least three character poses or designs a day. Um, I hope that helps. Yeah, that's, uh, I think the one background a day is, is helpful. And also, guys, like, I, um, I don't want you guys to think that there's like, you're just drawing with on on stop, like a, a lot of the, you know, people like, because I've worked with Miguel myself, I know that art directors are, are going to give you what you can handle, right? So like, you, this is a due date. This is how, as long as you're meeting your due dates, you do. Uh, it's not like you have to have that one drawing a day here every day. You're delivering something, um, and your art directors and your teams will know your strengths and your weaknesses. This is why I always say that it's really good to be vocal to say, "Hey, I can do three characters a day, no problem." But when it comes to backgrounds, I'm going to need more time, right? So we kind of that honesty and with your art directors is super important when you're um when you're a junior artist starting into that road to art directing. Yeah. What do I look for? Um, I look for draftsmanship. Like, do they understand form? Do they know how to turn something in space? Uh, do they understand perspective? Um, do they understand color theory? Uh, there's a bunch of skill sets I'm looking for. And I think in your portfolio, it should uh, showcase that. Um, so for a character designer, I'm looking for special poses of the characters because a lot of the work is going to be a special pose of like, you know, something crazy that we need for the animator. Um, mouse charts, there's a lot of work for mouse charts where you have to draw the mouse shapes of the character. Um, there's a lot of redress work where you have to like redress the character in a different um different wardrobe or he's there wearing something different so just different all these little things i'm looking for in a portfolio specifically for character designers um yeah just different options of character of the same character i love to see options of the same character if you're drawing a wolf i would love to see you know at least three different versions of what this character wolf guy might look like, you know? So, hope that helps. Yeah, cool. And for those who don't know, uh, you know, what mouth chart is or special poses, um, can you kind of give us a little quick explain on, on that, Miguel? Mouth, sure. Mouth chart is just like the character's face and what the mouth looks like or certain sounds that you make. So, but add a sound, like usually different mouse shapes that you have to draw for different sounds. That would be a mouse chart. Um, yeah, if you Google mouse charts, animation mouse charts, you'll see some examples of it as well. Um, special poses is like a pose that a character has to do. Like for example, I don't know, like let's say SpongeBob had to pull down his eyelids and it's like this really funny uh, drawing. We we need to figure that out. Like, what exactly does that look like? You know. So we look at the boards, and then we 
we take what the board artist did and then we just really flush out the design of it mm -hmm. okay so special pose what you guys are looking for is to kind of see how you interpret how that character would do that position so it does it does show a little bit of creativity right because if the character is always like this but if you want him to be like ole or something that's the special pose because it's different than how they are usually standing from my understanding correct yep correct oh cool yeah i had honestly gotten telling you uh miguel such a good good teacher i did learn a lot of these stuff when i worked with him on the casa grandes show um, all right, more questions. We have from Lisette Diaz. What is a big turnoff when navigating through a portfolio? I find myself fighting with the format in Wix websites and would like to know how to make it more user-friendly when recruiters are viewing my work. And I love it when it's very simple. Like you see my portfolio and it's literally one button. Like it just goes from one image to the next image. I, I don't really care for when I have to double click and do something special and drop down menu and try to figure it out. Like that really turns me off. There's like a hundred portfolios I have to go through. So I'm just like, next. You know, so I, I say, keep it simple and, and don't overcomplicate the design. Cause what's really important is, is the work, not, you know, you have this really creative drop down menu video music blazing it's like whoa what is all this so keep it simple i like it simple yeah I have so many to look at like if i have to figure if it takes me more than three minutes to figure out how to navigate the website i'm off to the next portfolio yeah and in per oh. this is all personal question how do you feel about password protected websites I think they're fine as long as I get the password. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like a lot of times that happens where um if you have a password protected, make sure that when you're sharing it, the like you make sure the password is being shared along. Cause I've gotten portfolios and I click on it and it has a password. And I'm like, at some point that gets lost. Um, so I know at least I'm with you when I'm looking at pages. I kind of if I can't troubleshoot it too quickly, I or if I have to click too many drop downs to get to things is a lot. Yeah. Now, any advice on a general of sort of getting into the industry in the art space? Um, because a lot of times people think they're going to go in and they're going to be like, I want to be an art director. I'm going to get hired as an art director. So there was a question about the journey. And I'm, I'm just curious about what is a realistic journey for a junior artist that's starting their career and they just graduated college and they want to be an art director one day, think, what should be my plan? If you could land an art directing gig right out of college, great, good for you. But <laughs> I personally think the people that don't get the experience before they start moving up aren't the greatest at, at being an art director because okay. they don't have all the experience of you know, the red notes and how I can make my work better from other art directors. I think I learned so much from other art directors and I started picking out the things that I did like, and now I have my own unique voice, I think, you know, so if you remove all that, then you're just basing it off from your own self or college. Yeah. It's really important to learn from other people, you know, because there's always, there's always something new that I'm still learning and I could always get better. You know, there's always going to be someone like really good that once you get to that point, you'll find someone else that's really good. And you're just like, oh, I want to be like them. And then you'll find someone else that's way makes that person look like, you know, and then you're just constantly growing and growing and growing. But you're also learning from, you know, all these other people along the way. So I knew at a very young age that I wanted to be an art director. So I would have lunch with art directors. How did you become an art director? Mm -hmm. What skill sets do I need to become an art director? So I knew the art directors that did a little bit of everything, I respected a lot more because they did my job. You know, they did a character design. They were a character designer. They did do a prop designer. They were a painter. They were, you know, a color stylist. 
So I was always freelancing something that I wasn't doing at work. So if I was a background designer at Nickelodeon, I was trying to freelance prop design or color work or something other than what I was doing at work because I knew my goal was to become an art director. And I knew the art directors that did a little bit of everything, I, I respected a little bit more. Like they were able to help me more. They made me grow as an artist. I just got a little bit more from them than someone that came from just color. Some art director that just did color, which is fine. But I always love learning a little bit of everything. Yeah, that makes sense. And it also kind of gives you a little more authority, right? Like on um, when you're having those conversations with artists, I'm like, well, when I was an artist, I did it this way. And it doesn't make you feel like, how do you how do you know you don't know my job it's like well actually I did do your job you know so I think that's also important um and the empathy that you get I think we um for everyone who's you know if you're early in your careers you don't it's so important to know what the left hand is doing the right hand is doing right at all times because your production teams can be really big sometimes so it's nice to kind of keep that communication so Awesome. Well, we have uh, 10 more minutes, nine more minutes. So anybody has any last questions, please, if you were thinking, doubting yourself, this is the moment to just type it. You're in a safe space. We're happy to answer questions. Um, Miguel is awesome. So please send over your questions these last 10 minutes. If you're literally were thinking about it, this is your sign to type it. Um, all right, Esai Alvarez. I know demo reels aren't meant to be short and simple and show one's best work and portfolios are meant to be a big compilation of many things. Which would be considered more important? Oh, I think if you're in CG, I feel like there's more of a demo reel, like animators or people that are modeling or rigging. I think a demo reel is fine. But I think if you want to go more on the art side of thing, I, I think portfolio is fine. But um, if you make a demo reel of your art, then that's okay. I think it's not common where I, I see a portfolio that's a demo reel. I hope that helps. Yeah, I, I'm also a little, uh, I'm with Miguel on this one. I feel like for artists, I'm always used to seeing portfolios um reels for me have been mostly for animators or for character animation or more like technical um most of the art has always been just 2d portfolios or websites you know obviously um we have a question from Lisette Diaz I'm a ter I'm terrible at animation but when I went to Lightbox many told me that making your own film it's a great way to get recognized by the industry would you agree and if I do and if if I do not have a film should I focus on making one that's a good question I love when I see someone that made a film because I can respect all the hard work that goes into making a film because I know I had to make a film each year at CalArts so it's grueling to make a short film by yourself so it just shows a lot about how bad you want it if you made a film like you're pretty serious about it you know like this is what you really want to do if not you would never finish the film no one will ever see it yeah um, that's a tough one because although I agree that it is it is a great way to get recognized by the industry I agree with Miguel I think that um it is a lot of work and um it could also hurt you because if you're starting your career and you're focusing on making your movie and making this is who I am this is my voice um it could also hurt you because you're not focusing on the path right Miguel talked about how doing every work and just kind of a little bit of everything helped him be a great art director um I think that's the same as trying to get into the industry get that junior job move up the ladder 
if your job is to be an art director, my personal advice, and I have worked with a lot of young people that are making their films, is team up with people. If you want to be an art director on a film, because that's what you want to do, then maybe that's the best way to do it. Instead of you creating your own movie is finding out people that are looking for art directors for their films. You can still show who you are, your voice. You'll get some idea of art directing and maybe if you like it or not, or you realize like, oh, I maybe need more experience. Um, and three, it'll give you a little more freedom to do like your personal arc versus focusing all your time on a short. But again, it is for different people, different paths. If you really, really want it and you make this movie and it's great, that's happened too. So um, it's how much you want it. Yeah. I mean, it does. you don't have to make a film, but if you make a cool film, like that's great. More eyeballs on your name, but I wouldn't say you have to make a film. Yeah. Um, let's see, we have time for, um, we have time for one more question after this. If anybody's thinking about it, just shoot it over right now. Hi, I'm an inspiring character designer, but I've heard that prop design is a way into the industry. Should I add props that go along with my character designs or do I need to create a separate portfolio for props? Good one. That's a good one. I would say it doesn't hurt to have two separate ones. Um, but I think if you're first starting, I'm okay if you have props in the back of your portfolio when you're training your character work, you know, or if there's a, like a cool way to um, sneak some props into the character work, that's cool too. Um, but maybe the character's in a really cool pose, but he's in a car or he's holding a really cool prop, you know, so I could be like, oh, cool. This person does character work, but I don't have a character position open right now. But I see they're really interested in drawing props as well. I mean, that's how I got into Book of Life. Like, I just put a little bit of everything, but they specifically saw my props and they were like, yep, we need this guy to do the props in this movie. And then once I got in, I got to do other stuff. Like, I got to do environments and backgrounds and characters and a bunch of other stuff, but just get your foot in the door, I say. Yeah, that's great. Great. Well, thank you so much, Miguel, for your time. Um, I know that uh, you are a very busy, busy man working on the Casa Grande's movie over at Netflix Studios, as I can see from your background, I believe. Maybe yeah. wrong. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. Um, and we will be... Um, if you know, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll be seeing you around. And thank you so much, Danny and Brick Foundation for the opportunity to crash your pre-apprenticeship um, speaker series with LXIA. Um, again, my name is Magdia Laramila Duhamel from Latinx and Animation. Thank you so much, Brick. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if folks wanted to follow you or see more of your work, Miguel, where might they be able to find you? I dropped your Instagram, but I don't know if you had a portfolio website as well you wanted to share. Could share my portfolio too and then i also dropped latinx and animations website so you know joining Thank these community-based organizations is a fantastic way to sort of uh connect and grow like you know my deal was talking about uh working on other projects you know these see these community orgs are fantastic for finding like-minded people and peers to work alongside and then yeah, and as we mentioned before, if you need portfolio reviews, definitely apply for our uh, summit and check out some more review options we got there. Oh, yeah, well. one last thing. Have your contact information on your portfolio. I've seen portfolios where it's great work, but I have no idea how to get a contact with them. No phone number, no email, no address, no nothing. And it's like, oh, well, there goes that. I can't contact you. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good one. And that includes, you know, that instead of your contact page, you know, there's like a contact page. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to fill that out. So instead, I just want an email. So, yes, that's a good one, Miguel. Good one. Good one. Yeah. Make I'm it so easy excited. for people to find you and contact you if they love your work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why on my portfolio, there's my contact on the bottom of the page. That way, if they stop, the information's on the bottom. They could 
They don't have to go any more pages. They could stop right there and be like, yep, his contact, I need him, call him right now, or email him. Make yourself easy to hire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that sells, it says a lot about a person too. Like if they're overcomplicated, it just makes me feel like they're going to overcomplicate things in the on the job. But if it's like really simple and easy to navigate, it's like, oh, this person may be easy to work with. Who knows? We'll find out. But it's not actually always true. But the simpler I think are people that are easy to work with. Yeah. yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, great little final tip. So thank you all. Round of applause for uh, for Miguel and Ayala for hosting. And you all have a great, wonderful day. We'll see you at the next uh, series we got. Right. Okay. Bye. Thanks for having me. Uh, yep.